It was so interesting to see my mind just thinking, 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 and giving me all the reasons why I might not, you know, want to go to France or how hard it was going to be, or all the fears, you know, yeah. what's going to happen. What if, I don't know, what if I get sick there? Or whatever, all these yeah. fears. Hi, I'm Kim Tolson and I'm the traveling therapist. It's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world. I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance based private therapy practice and a multi six figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Traveling Therapist Podcast. I'm really excited today to have Victoria Stitt here with us. She goes to Vicki. Vicki, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm excited to share your story. I don't think I've done a podcast episode yet of anyone that has moved to France and is living and living that dream in France. So I'm really excited to hear all about that and how you're making that work. But I always like to start out with the question, how'd you go from being a typical therapist to a traveling therapist? Okay. Yes. Hi, Kim. And thank Hi. you so much for having me here. I'm really excited. I've been loving your podcast. So yeah. Okay. Well, when, let's see, I was in a group practice in 2013 to 2015. And then I went out on my own in my private practice in late 2015. And I think it was just a couple of years later that I heard about online therapy. And when I, as soon as I heard about that, I thought in my mind, travel, (laughs) because I've always wanted to travel more. I used to dream, even as a teenager, you know, I wanted to live in London, you know, and now when I went to France in my early twenties, I thought I'd love to live in France. And France was kind of, I was total Francophile for a while. And so I thought if I can do that, I'm on it. Right. So (laughs) I, as soon as I could, I really started doing online therapy sessions and I was doing some, maybe since about 2017, 18, I can't remember exactly, but it was definitely at least a couple of years before the pandemic hit. Nice. And so my goal was to go in the summer of 2020 <laughs> to okay. France. Oh, okay. And I was think exactly. <laughs> we know what happens. So I was seeing probably about maybe 60 to 70% of my clients online okay. pre-pandemic. And then I was actually planning on telling people in the spring that I was going to move to France in late summer. My intention was to go by September, 2020. Wow. And then the pandemic struck, of course. And well, I couldn't go to France, but it took care of me becoming completely online with my clients. So it kind of did that for me. I didn't have to tell anybody (laughs) my plans. And so that's it. I've, I've been online ever since. Wow. And pandemic kind of in a way made it more like it gave me that feeling of urgency that, you know, because I mm. felt like I couldn't, I couldn't travel when I wanted to Right, this thing that we always took for granted. So many things we took for granted, oh. right. As we all know, we couldn't do all of a sudden, you know, I always thought, Oh, I can travel someday whenever I feel like it, whatever. And so I think the pandemic just really made us all face that uncertainty that is our reality all the time, but it just really put it in our face. And so, so yeah, then I, I was planning as soon as we could, we're going to, we're going to go, we're, we're going to do it. And so that happened 2021. Wow. We actually, so my, when I say we, my partner and I, we rented out my house. So I still have a, a house I own. I'm not yet in it. I'm, at, I'm back in the U S now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I returned in June actually. So yeah, we'll we'll get there. But so about, let's see, I rented my home out in October 1st of 2021. 
So it's been a little over a year now. And we were waiting for my partner's visa because he needed to get a visa oh. to go to France for a year. So we got a one year visa, a visa. I'm very fortunately an EU citizen. So yeah. Okay. So um, I was ready. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we rented the house out, put everything in storage. It was a hustle. For sure, we had to do everything to get the house inspected for tenants, all that. Um, Yeah, literally, like we, all we did is pack and work constantly (laughs) for like, I don't like three months. So, but we did it. We got out September 30th, we left and we actually went first to, because we were waiting this visa, we went to North Carolina in the Wilmington area. Have you been there? Yes. A long, long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we went to Wilmington for a month and then, yeah. And then we went to South Carolina for a couple of weeks. And then when we found out the visa came through, we went back wow. up. So I'm, I'm near Baltimore. So we went back to Baltimore to get into um, DC and get the, you know, the visa and everything. Wow. And then we left about a week later for France, but we loved Wilmington. We loved the area there, the the beaches, the town was just great. And then we were able to also see, I had always wanted to see Savannah, Georgia and Charleston and love those places. Oh my gosh. We stayed near a beach in South Carolina. That was just amazing. I'm absolutely amazing. It's the sunsets there. Yeah. And then have you been to Savannah? I have. Yes. Uh Yeah. So like dizzyingly gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Just (laughs) loved it. So it was on, I was a traveling therapist. (laughs) Yes. How amazing. Okay. So I have so many questions. Okay. So, so you're a dual, you have dual residency, I guess, with EU and the United States. How did that happen? Just curious about that. Yeah. So my mom is from Estonia. Mm. So I have Estonian citizenship because she had to leave in the 1940s when Ooh. you know everything was falling apart and communism and yeah Hitler and everybody yeah. you know else was a good time to flee and so yeah her mom and dad brought her over to the U.S. they were actually planning to go to Australia but everything was changed I don't know yeah and they came to the U.S. okay So yeah, because of, I didn't even know that I could have Estonian citizenship until a few years ago. So as soon as I found out I could, because there was some, some language that made it appear that they didn't allow for dual citizenship, but that was not like applicable to my situation. So, so yeah, as soon as I found out that I actually could, and I wish I had known years ago, because I could have done this years ago. No one in my family talked about it. I, yeah, I find that so interesting. Yeah. To, yeah. Like I have a big family about it. Yeah. Okay. I have a big family with like tons of cousins. No one ever talked about this. Yeah. And one of my cousins had it and I didn't even know that. Wow. I found out and then I, my mom was like, oh yeah, I think um, your cousin Wendy has citizenship. And I thought, why didn't anybody tell me this? So (laughs) Wow. So once I found out it was an easy process, I have to say okay. Estonia was really great to work with. And like within, I think it was two months after I applied, I had citizenship. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, if, you have, cool. if you have the dual citizenship, I guess it makes it a lot easier than to just come over if you want to live in France or anywhere in the EU. I guess that knocks out that whole visa thing and everything, right? Or I don't even Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Okay. I can live anywhere in the EU and I can work in the EU, oh. which is pretty fabulous, I have to say. <laughs> Just you know, knowing that I can do that. And yeah, I didn't have to kind of apply for anything when I got to France and or anything. So that was nice. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so that that is so interesting. So if you have relatives, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Europe, double Absolutely. check, to make sure you're not eligible. If if, mm-hmm. if that would make the process so much easier, yes, you wouldn't have to wait for the visa like you were talking about for your partner. Yeah, and so and wow. but I have to say I was very surprised. I had I known how easy it would be to get a visa to live in France for a year. I probably mm-hmm. would have done that if I had known about it earlier. I will say that the, like you have to give your, you know, your application, you have to take it to the 
embassy and you're, you have your appointment and all that. When he turned it in, his paperwork, documents and such, they told him, apparently I couldn't go in with him, I think because of COVID, but they oh. told him, this is the first perfect application we've seen all week. Wow. <laughs> like not <laughs> missing anything. So that wow. it, we were very surprised. And that maybe took a couple of months after he um, submitted the application for him to okay. get the visa. So it was, I didn't know like we could do this. So it was, I, really yeah, I don't cool. know what the process is for the visa. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so you go to the French embassy. How does it work just for people listening? If they wanted to do that. Like what, what, what's the steps? I'm so curious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Honestly, it's funny because you think you're going to remember everything, but I don't remember yeah. <laughs> everything right now, you know, sure. but there was, there was actually a blog that walked you through wow, specifically for the French embassy and application for French visas. There was an amazing blog that was so specific and gave such great instructions that we just followed that pretty much to a T. Amazing. And so we were very, we just made sure we were over-prepared if anything, and and yeah, and then you kind of do it all online. You mm-hmm. book your appointment online and then you take your documents. And once you have your appointment and then you just kind of wait. <laughs> yeah. So that was the whole, like you're saying, South Carolina, North Carolina, just just kind of like, okay, we'll just go around until it's time, until that comes through and then we can go. Yeah. And we went to, well, one, it was October 1st when we were arriving in North Carolina and we're from Maryland. So we wanted to kind of extend summer one, you know, Yes. and so October and November in North and South Carolina was just amazing. The weather was incredible. Yeah. It was so nice and so many beaches and just, I know you like beaches too, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're in Florida for the winter. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yep. I remember hearing and so that was a, always a key thing we're kind of looking for. Where can we be near a beach? And also I'll say that it was, they were the two cities I hadn't seen in the U.S. and in the States that I wanted to see on the East Coast. They were the remaining states I really hadn't visited. South Carolina, I, you know, I've driven through yeah. on the way to Florida. But so I wanted to really see Charleston and then Georgia. I had never stopped in Georgia. So I wanted yeah. to see Savannah a whole lot. And yeah, and now all I have on the East Coast is New Hampshire. It's the only oh, state. Oh, nice. Wow, that's <laughs> so great. <laughs> I've, I've driven through, but I need to, to stay there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. So, okay, so the visa comes comes through. You've hustled. You got everything in storage. I guess you found somebody to rent your house. You had to go through that whole yeah. process, getting it inspected and everything. And then yeah. rent the house out. And then, so tell us, Tell us about France. Like, where are you? How'd you pick where to go? And, but you said you're back in the United States now. So I just would love to hear about that whole process for you. Yeah. Yes. Great questions. So, you know, and it's interesting too, I I have to say, like, before we decided to go to France, you know, I always wanted to live in France. Like I, you know, I visited maybe a month total in France before, but it was always, I love speaking French. Yeah, I'm badly, you know, <laughs> I've lost, I've lost so much. I used to be pretty good and conversational, but I've lost so much over the years, but I, I just love the idea of French culture. I love the language and I really wanted to be in France, but there was, you know, working up to the decision of where we're going to go. Yeah. There were times when I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just stay in the U S for, you know, and I'll just live somewhere else. Cause I really wanted to live in a different place. I didn't, I grew up in Maryland. I've lived pretty much all my life in Maryland. Well, all my life I've traveled different places, but it's, you know, two weeks mm-hmm. here or three weeks there, or whatever. So I really wanted to live somewhere else. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just stay in the States for a year or something. And so it won't be so, it won't feel so hard or, or, you know, going to a whole other culture. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, you know, you're doing it again. You're doing this thing where you kind of talk yourself out of your dreams, you know, and you're kind of settling, you know, for kind of what you don't really want out of fear, you know, and anxiety. So I thought, no, I'm, 
I'm going to France. And he, my partner, he said the same thing. He said, you've been talking about France since I met you, which was 11 years ago. And let, let's go to France. <laughs> Why not? I love that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, we're doing it. So there was a part of me, it was, it was really interesting actually, because, and as you know, and you know, I talked about a little, we, we were talking a little bit about how my specialty is anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, so, and I've worked through my own anxiety and I tell these things to my clients all the time, but it was so interesting to see my mind just thinking, 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 and giving me all the reasons why I might not, you know, want to go to France or how hard it was going to be or all the fears, you know, what's going to happen. What if, I don't know, what if I get sick there or whatever, all these yeah. fears and, and also just the indecision. So I'm not sure, right. I'm thinking, I'm not sure I want to go to France. I'm not sure I'm going to like it. I'm not sure how it's going to be. And what I realized is this kind of dream of going to France, I had to give it up in order to turn it into reality, Ah, oh. you know, and yeah. because reality, I think we all know. And I think sometimes we're afraid to let go of dreams and actually act on them because I think there's a piece of us that knows it's going to be very different. We actually don't know how it's going to be the reality of it. Mm. And so it can be a little scary. And I think that's inherent in travel, right? That we have to face the uncertainty. And there's a big part of us that is afraid of uncertainty. We like the feeling of certainty, right? Right. Yeah, yeah but it's always it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's right. always a feeling, right? Certainty is a feeling, it's not a fact. <laughs> so I was really kind of indecisive for a while. And then I thought, and it was really bothering me. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to France. I'm doing this process. I don't care how I feel about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't nice. care if I don't know if I should go. I don't care if there's a part of me that's like, oh, you should just stay here and do something else. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm going to find out what happens. And it's done. Like the decision's made. And, and so then it was kind of like very interesting because again, I tell my clients to do this all the time, but it was really just actively not engaging with my own thoughts. Uh, and I love that. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just really interesting to just be really watching my thoughts and being mindful of them without getting dragged around by them or thinking, oh, well, this means I don't know. And I'm back in confusion. It's like, no, I'm going to France. This is a decision. I can feel as confused as I want, or as unsure as I want. This is happening. Don't care what I think or how I feel about it anymore. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's it's kind of funny. Because that is the epitome of all of it, right? That uncertainty. And I mean, that is traveling. I mean, literally something can happen That's every right. day. There's no way to prepare for it. You just have to embrace that like yeah. uncertainty and, and, and the fact that it's going to be, it can be anything. You just don't know. You just have to just go, like you said. Exactly. And what I love about that, right. Is it's, it's life, right. That's yeah. life, but you see it more when it's compressed and it's more dramatic, I guess, in travel, mm -hmm. you know, but really it's all of our lives. And we just almost trick ourselves, I think, into again, thinking we have some kind of certainty mm -hmm. or some kind of control. I, I think, you know, many of us, maybe all of us, I don't know, as human, as humans, just, I think we're geared to trying to control things, right? Mm -hmm. Both externally and internally. Yeah. <laughs> we look outside of ourselves for the answers and solutions. We look to other people or whatever, and then we want to feel certain and we identify with our thoughts. You know? Yeah. And of course, all of these things can lead to a lot of anxiety. And what I've seen as a therapist is these things, right, make us feel anxious. Right. And then travel teaches you the opposite. Right? It teaches you how to live with that uncertainty. And so I think as therapists, it's so useful because we we probably talk a lot about this with our clients and how mm -hmm. oh, lean into this uncertainty yeah. <laughs> and all that. Embrace you know, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Embrace the discomfort. Yeah. But when you travel, you really start to embrace the discomfort and the uncertainty. And now Absolutely. I love it. I love knowing that I don't know where I'm going to live the rest mm -hmm. of my life. 
Right. Like I, I love not knowing that I don't know. Yeah. And I think that's the difference, right? It's because none of us know yeah. it's that we think what we think we do. Right. right. Exactly. And sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works out and we can build the white picket fence and live in one place forever. And sometimes that works out and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. But sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. You know? So I love that about travel too. It kind of mm -hmm. teaches you that, wow, we are adaptable. We are yes. flexible. I learned that I can sleep anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Unless I have yeah. those feather pillows. I hate those. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, the, right. Cause that's what, yeah. that was the biggest part for in France yeah. for me was just getting physically comfortable. Yes. It yeah. was a little bit of a challenge sometimes. It was. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying all that. Yeah. It's so, it's so true. We rarely just think about the process of traveling and like how it connects with our anxiety and everything, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. For us, I, I've come to love that process. Like, like starting March 1st, we have no idea where we're going to be. And I've, you know, it's so exciting. Yeah. You could look at mm -hmm. it either way. Is that super exciting or super like uncomfortable, you know, and, right. you know, That's I just right. go with the, the exciting part, you know, like, cause I, I know we'll be okay wherever we end up, you know, we've got the tools to manage anything that comes up. So yeah, exactly. And I think that's, what's so great about travel too. It mm -hmm. we're all, you know, this is in the zeitgeist now where everybody's talking about self-trust and you know, looking, mm. you know, at your inner truth and all that and travel again, it kind of, you either learn to do that or you suffer greatly yeah. when you travel, you know, right. you have to surrender to that at some point, or you're going to have a real fight on your hands that, that makes it much more miserable. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's the same with anxiety. The more we try to get rid of it, fight against it, avoid it, talk ourselves out of it usually we exacerbate it. And I wish you said something that I wanted to touch upon or whatever, but, mm -hmm. oh, I don't think I can remember. It's, it was okay. gone. <laughs> it'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Probably after, after uh, we sign off. <laughs> yeah. It'll be like, oh yeah, I meant to say that. So, so where did you go in France? How did, where did you finally decide to go? Right. That's right. You asked me that. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. So Okay, so we were planning on going to a place called Set, S E T E, and it's in the south of France, about an hour, maybe no, maybe a half an hour from Montpellier. So wow. we were planning to go there because it was known for its beautiful beaches and great food, great seafood. And so we thought, okay, this sounds great. It's, it has a very alive art culture. And we thought we'd go there. And then we were literally planning to go there, starting to look. And I met somebody online who was about to move to France as well. She was literally a month ahead of me doing the wow. visa process and, and all that. So she said, oh, you should go to Nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And I thought, okay, we're not married to the idea of set. I'll, although it, it looks pretty great. She said, Nice is amazing. Well, of course, it's the French Riviera, which I had visited when I was like 20 something, but I didn't remember a lot of it. I remembered a little bit, you know, vaguely, and I was only there for, I don't know, four days. So she said she was really selling Nice. And she <laughs> said, it's just a great community and a lot of expats and it's so walkable and all that. And we thought, okay, you know what? We'll go to Nice. <laughs> she oh, talked wow. me into it right then and there. So, so we decided to go to Nice and we went for, at first we booked a, an Airbnb for a month. Okay. And so when we first arrived in France, we were in Paris just for two nights. You know, I would have, I think in retrospect, I would have flown directly into Nice. So yes, if I could do it over, I would probably have flown into Nice directly instead of going to Paris, but I was not sure about being on a plane for 11 hours, 11 and a half mm. hours with a mask. Cause I had never flown with a mask before. Yeah. I didn't know how that was going to be. So we thought we'd break it up and go to Paris, spend two nights in Paris and then take a train to Nice. Well, <laughs> I have to say I would have, yeah, I would have gone directly because it wasn't so bad. I, my mask was very comfortable during yeah. the flight. Of course, now I guess they're not required, but you know, that could change again, but 
And then the train was so crowded, so noisy. Oh. It, was, it felt really long. So yeah, I would have done that differently. But yeah, again, we, we learn. Yeah. And so we arrived in Nice. And luckily, we had this really great Airbnb th- for the first month. So it was still November, late November. So it wasn't at their peak rates. And it was this big, gorgeous Airbnb, maybe third or fourth floor, I think fourth floor apartment, right in the middle of like Old Town and the newer part of Nice. And have you been to Nice? No, I haven't. It's it's stunning. I mean, it's gorgeous. The wow. the color palettes of the buildings, they have like codes for that or whatever. It's It's absolutely gorgeous. They have a tram that runs oh. through the city and takes you everywhere. And, and then there's the old town section, which is so charming, like, you know, just dripping with charm. Yeah. And <laughs> you're making me you want know, to go. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I would recommend it. And the open air markets, you know, we would go oh, to the, yeah. it's called the Salea market and they would have these amazing uh, rows of produce and spices and cheeses. Of course it's France and, and bakes goods. And it was, really magical. So we had this place and we were always really close to the Mediterranean too. So we were always this, the first place we were maybe, I don't know, two blocks from the Mediterranean. And it was just really magical. I have to say, when I think about it now, and I reflect, of course, everything's different, right? Your memories are a version, but (laughs) when I think about it, I just feel like such a magical time. So yeah, I just loved it. And, and so, yeah, it was, it was great. We were there for a month and we had and my son, my son came to visit, he's in college and he came to visit for two weeks during the holidays and he loved it. And then we moved to another place in Nice oh, and we nice. ended up staying for, we ended up staying for four months in Nice, but in three different places, the second wow. and third places weren't as roomy. So again, lessons in, from travel, I learned that I don't actually want a tiny house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I really thought I did before. Oh, was like, yeah. This is not fun. You can't find stuff. Your things are all piled on each other. <laughs> Your yeah. obstacle course a little bit. So yeah, that's kind of where the real discomfort started. Like the bed was really uncomfortable. I think we were there for five weeks. However, again, we were a block, about a block from the Mediterranean this time, so close. So every day we'd take walks along the Mediterranean or we'd rent scooters or bikes. We even bought a bike after a while because some of the free, you know, the ones you rent were wonky, but we just so immersed ourselves in the culture, which I just loved. I, I had to speak French. It was great. You know, we had to get a cart for our shark, our shopping, you know, the kind people drag around in France and, and, and we had no car. So we walked everywhere. We got both in shape and out of shape. <laughs> at <the same> time. <laughs> it equals um, each other out. <laughs> exactly. Like I literally came back with like, okay, my hip, a hip issue and an SI oh, joint no. issue just because the walking and then mm-hmm. later even more walking, but but it was, it was really fabulous. I, I just loved it. I, I want to wow. go back. Oh my yeah, God. It really kind of feels like home now at this point when I think about it. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So was it yeah. all Nice the whole time or did you go to other places around France? <laughs> yeah. So, and while we were in Nice, we traveled a bit. We went, you know, we went day trips in like Monaco or oh, nice. there's a, a small, like ancient village or medieval village, whatever called, um, I think it's going to get it wrong now, but like St. Paul de Vence. And then there's like oh. Ez and all these places that were gorgeous, of course. And, mm-hmm. and so what I want to say what was interesting, right. Is in North Carolina. And one of the reasons we left the U S too, another advantage of doing that and kind of something that compelled us to when we were not sure was the Airbnb prices. Yeah. They were significantly more expensive in mm-hmm. the U S Yes. So we were in Wilmington. We were about a half an hour, probably 20 minutes from the nearest beach driving. Mm-hmm. And we were paying about 2000 but that it was going to go up to 3000 the next month mm-hmm. or almost 3000 
And we had places in Nice, a block from the Mediterranean in gorgeous, stunning <laughs> Nice, <laughs> the French Riviera for like 1100 euros, which was maybe wow. $1,250 dollars at the t- time. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy significance and yeah, the price difference. And it's like, guys, this is like the French Riviera. Why would I <laughs> yeah, why, why would I ever not do this? <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty cool. But then we did start to have that discomfort with just mattress issues, mm-hmm. you know, Airbnb furniture and stuff. And we wanted to go somewhere else. So we did go to set, which was the original plan. (laughs) Yeah. So we went there and still on the coast, but that's South. Yeah. Pretty sure it's South. I'm not great with geography, but yeah, (laughs) South of me. Okay. Yeah. And that was great. Beautiful, but very hilly. Mm. We were at the top of the kind of the hilliest part of the town oh. and then our Airbnb actually we had to walk up these really steep like 30 tiny marble <laughs> stairs every oh. time we went. I literally had like daydreams of like me like toppling down oh, no. I thought if I can just leave and without like falling oh. down those stairs I'll be happy uh-huh. did we freeze did we freeze <laughs> We did freeze for a second, but I hear you. Oh gosh, the stairs, just nightmares of falling, falling down the stairs. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But but we, again, that's when the walking really started to get to be too much because we were on hills, those, Mm -hmm. those charming cobblestones, uh, you know, (laughs) those hills, you know, the European charm, it starts to, to, well, for us, it started to get old. And again, I, I came in with a little bit of a, SI joint hip issue, even mm-hmm. from the U S so it just kind of got worse. Yeah. It ended up being one of the reasons we left. Cause we were just starting to get beat up from a lot of travel yeah. and, um, and then, and then prices were going up and honestly, I just thought I need to get home and get some physical therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and we were just starting to travel more and more. So after about six weeks in set, again, it was great. Oddly, it reminded me a lot of Baltimore. Oh, interesting. Huh. Yeah. Kind of the art scene was similar mm-hmm. to Baltimore in a way. And although it also had gorgeous, beautiful beaches that you could walk <laughs> along and we don't have that in Baltimore, unfortunately. But anyway, so then we we were kind of craving some like nature because we were in cities yeah. the whole time. So we ended up going to the... Oh, from, I have to say from set, we did go to Barcelona, Spain, because it was only oh, a few nice. hours train ride. Oh, so wow. that was great because I hadn't been to Spain before. So that right. was really nice. And then we came back to set and then we, we left and we took a train to the Dordogne region, which is wow kind of near Bordeaux. Mm. So that was in the countryside and I, we loved it. We rented a car from there. So it was so nice to have a car. Oh, yes. But that we were only there for a little over a week. And that was really great. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to be back there and maybe mm-hmm. even living there for a while. And then we went to Bordeaux in the city and then we were done. We were just like, we hit a wall. We just got to the yeah. point where we were just like, and, and then we couldn't leave because there was like a train strike. Oh, <laughs> so then we were trying gosh. <laughs> we were trying to get a train back to Paris and then it, and then suddenly they opened up and we grabbed something, you know, I, I also forgot from when we, that's right. When we first left Nice, I was wrong. I didn't go to set first. We actually went to Italy for oh, a while. Nice. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were about maybe almost three weeks in Italy and we went to, have you heard of Cinque Terre? Yes. One of my favorite places. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you've been there. Uh-huh. I loved it so much. I know. Isn't you, it gorgeous? Uh, yeah. Oh, it is amazing that I want to go back. I really want to go back there. Yeah. Me too. We didn't get to see one of the five. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to go back just for that because another, a train strike, for, we were kind of held hostage in, uh, I want to say Ria Maggiore. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. Place. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't get to the next place. So we need to go back for that. But I amazing. absolutely love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't the, the food, the, the food in Italy, some yeah. of the best. Oh like, my gosh. Food. 
Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. And as before we hit record, I, I was telling her about my celiac disease for anybody listening. And right, I, right. I actually got diagnosed like the day before I was supposed to leave for Italy with celiac. And I was like, you're kidding. I'm not going to be able to eat any of the pizza and blah, blah, blah. And it, and it turned out like Italy is one of the best places in the world for people with celiac. Like is all the right? restaurants accommodate. Yeah. It was oh. amazing. So just a little side note there. Okay. That is amazing. I would never yeah. have thought. Yep. Yep. They actually test the babies, babies when they're born for celiac, just to make sure that's how like aware they are of it over there. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea. Yeah. That's incredible. very cool. So, yeah. So we went a little bit, we went there, went to Florence, Venice, Rome, nice. you know, the, the, the usuals. <laughs> so were you seeing clients the whole time or were you working yes. that too? Okay. Nice. How yep. was that for you? That was fine. It was, I started out with more clients and then I just kind of, I stopped taking any new clients mm -hmm. before I left. And yeah. I just kind of allowed my caseload to dwindle a little bit because one, the time zone difference and two, yeah. I wanted to have fun. Yeah. Like I wanted to <laughs> really travel for a while and see things. So I, I let my caseload go to about half of what mm -hmm. it had been. And that was fine. Because again, I think a lot of times we, we think we need X number of clients or X amount of money. Mm -hmm. And is it true? You know, sometimes it's, again, it's our minds just trying to get safety and certainty and all that. And it might not be true. Yeah. So that, but it was nice. The time zone worked in my favor because I'm not a morning person. Oh, okay. And so I would see people starting at around, you know, three earliest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe two earliest my time, 2 PM, which is about eight, I think 8 AM. I got to know that the time zone difference is pretty well, but now I'm forgetting. So, yeah. and then I would just see, yeah, a few in the afternoon, three days a week. I only work Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, usually with clients. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So it worked yeah. out. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. It, was really, it was really nice. That's yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So then what happened that you decided to come back? Was it that, that you hit the wall, you were tired or in the physical health stuff or, or the visa ran out? Not sure. The visa was not going to run out until November. Okay. I really wanted to stay a whole year and I was determined uh, again, right? Tricks of yeah. the mind. I told myself, I am not leaving before a year's up. I said, I'm doing a year and I'm doing it. And <laughs> My partner was like, I don't think I can do a whole year because he couldn't work over. Uh, oh, interesting. He had a, like a, a land job here. Yeah. So he was like not earning income. He's a, an artist. So he would do an occasional painting or something he might sell, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, he couldn't, couldn't make money from French citizens. So that no, was a barrier. No. And so so yeah, that was one, but two, it was just, it was more, I think the, just the discomfort, the physical discomfort. And mm -hmm. we had this vision, right? Before we left, I had this vision of, we're going to be there for four weeks in one place, and then we're going to rent something for a year mm -hmm. or almost a year. We're going to rent one apartment. And then from that, which will be our base, We'll go and travel throughout Europe. I wanted to go everywhere. I wanted to go to yeah. Amsterdam. I wanted to go to Estonia. I wanted to yeah. go to so many other places. And I had this vision of that happening and it just never happened. We yeah. never found a place that was comfortable enough, the right, you know, within our budget and furnished, you know, that we yeah. could just land in. And so that never happened again, right? Uncertainty. Mm -hmm. you, you think something's going to go one way and it just didn't. Yeah. 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 That's the same for us. It's like, we're already trying to plan. Like we want to go out West. We want to hit Yellowstone and, and, you know, big sky, mm. Montana and, you know, all these different places. And then we're like, we're already planning this out. And then we're already out of like summer again. And, you know, it's like how right. you know, all these places, we're not going to have time to hit it before it's freezing, which we don't want to do, you know, but Exactly. Yeah, I hear you. You just get this plan in your head and it's like the reality is it just doesn't always pan out like that. <laughs> yep. 
Exactly. Yeah. And again, great, right? Metaphor for all of life. Exactly. <laughs> so it's really, it's, I think it's very helpful to just be aware that we don't know so much of what yeah. we think we do and that so much of what our minds yeah. think are out of line with reality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely teaches you that. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. Did you ask me something else that I forgot to answer? Uh, I think so. Yeah. No, I think we were just talking about clients and how that was for you. And, um, oh yeah, like you managed that pretty easily. That part of it was yeah, the and then, connectivity pretty good for you the whole time or the internet. It really was. I nice. learned what a hotspot was for the first time. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. It was so easy. Yeah. <laughs> I heard about these hotspots and I thought, Oh, how do I do that? I'm not techie. And yeah. then one day I just saw on the laptop popped up Victoria's iPhone click. Oh, that's a hotspot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when the internet was a awesome. little unstable in places, yeah, I learned to do that. Nice. That's great. There were a couple of Airbnbs where I had to upload some things because I, I run a membership site. It's, it's oh, not nice. active. Well, it is active, but I don't promote it anymore. I'm not trying to grow it anymore. It was for parents. It was coaching parents who have adult children with addiction. Oh, nice. And so, yeah. So I had a membership, which I still meet with them and, but I'm, I'm not recruiting anymore. I kind of feel like I'm done. I've said what I need to say on that subject mm -hmm. and I'm moving on, yeah. but you know, I still work with some of the parents and moms, especially, and I really like them, but I had to upload some stuff for my course on that. I have a course. And so sometimes I would have to go to yeah. a local cafe to get the speed. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Yeah. That that's tough. Mm -hmm. If you've got to do some heavy, heavy lifting that way, <laughs> videos or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They gotcha. just didn't have the speed for that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the internet was fine. It's just for that. Yeah. Nice. So now you're back, I guess, are you back in Maryland? Back, back in Maryland. In yes. Back in Maryland too. And we're renting out an apartment because I had tenants in my house. However, right. they, yeah. So we didn't know what we were going to do. And then we just got an apartment locally because the tenants bought a house. So they moved out around Labor Day. And so we're moving back in by January. Nice. So we're here for a couple more months. And then my plan is to really kind of comb through my belongings like comb through all my belongings again, mm -hmm. especially my photo albums, get them digitized. Nice. Because I really want to set myself up for kind of being able to travel more or go live somewhere else again. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. So you think it'll be back in Europe or somewhere else? I hope so. I hope Europe. Well, I have friends who are moving to Spain oh, nice. in February. Yeah. And they're really moving. Nice. They're selling everything there. Wow. They were in an apartment, so they are selling all their stuff right now. They are citizens. So they, she has Spanish citizenship. She just, she just got, wow. and she said she has no intention of returning. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. she's done. Yeah, it really is. And so I'm hoping we'll be able to visit them soon. Yeah. Oh, wow. How cool. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. And who knows, you know, again, uncertainty and I'm really hoping to, to go back to France for a while at least. And I, I don't know, I like the, I, there are some places in the U S I still really like and want to see yeah. like you, I kind of want to go out West. I, I, ha I don't know the West well, and I'd like to do that. I love new England, but yeah. winters are cold, but it's gorgeous. And so, yeah, so I still, you know, it's a great, we are lucky. It's a great piece of real estate in the U.S. <laughs> well, thank you so yeah. much. This has just been so helpful and just full of information that I think is going to help people that want to do what you did. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. You're welcome. And thank yeah. you so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. You're welcome. So where can people find you if they want to reach out to you or, or work with you? Yeah, well, I love connecting with other therapists, so people can always find me on LinkedIn, Victoria Stith. I'm an LCPC. 
I specialize in anxiety. And I also, I mentioned this to you briefly before, I also have a new program I just recently developed for people who have IBS pain and IBS is frequently IBS is frequently related to stress and anxiety and is maintained by it. So I developed a new uh, six week program for that, which is coaching. So uh, I think I sent you that link. You did. Yep. It'll be in the show notes too. So you guys can check that out. What is it? It's, oh, it's a bitly, but it's help for IBS. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. 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 Thank you yeah. so much. That's exciting. Before we we hit play, I was saying like with celiac disease, that's always a travel stressor is like the IBS and the upset stomach and gosh, did I eat something wrong? And now I've got to get on like an eight hour flight. How am I going to manage the bathroom? You know, just in general, like, you know, if my stomach's upset, that's right. so it's like, that's right. It's a huge deal for yes. people, especially travelers. So I, I love that you offer Absolutely. this. Absolutely. A lot of times. Yeah. Like you said, it's the the anxiety about it, the actual physical symptoms. And I just teach people how to not exacerbate those physical symptoms with their mind because our anxiety can so do that, right? We're bracing for the pain or we're tightening up or contracting, right? We have anxiety. We, we automatically contract and our thoughts kind of feed it. And we want to kind of reverse that pattern. Yes. I love that. Yeah. So you guys go check that out. If you struggle with IBS. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Same. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for listening to the traveling therapist podcast for show notes, links, and downloads, head over to the traveling therapist.com where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review. Thank you.